everybody sing that all over this place. Come on, somebody. Said, mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the I know I'm not the only one that believes that this morning. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. I said, mighty are the works of your Hallelujah. Let's praise God. Let's praise God with our hands. Praise God. Our hands can't do mighty works, but we can put them together and give God some praise. Amen. 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 Well, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. I bless his holy name. This is another day that the Lord hath made. And we are here to rejoice and to be glad in it. I am Pastor Vincent Oliver. I am proud. I am privileged to be not only your worship leader, but the sitting pastor here at the New Calvary Baptist Church. God has honored and blessed me to be able to serve this church for the past 36 years. Praise God. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you what God has done. Amen. Some people said it wouldn't last 36 weeks, but we thank God for what he is doing. Well, welcome into this time in this space of worship. To those of you who are our in-person worshipers, thank you for coming, getting up and getting dressed and coming to the house of prayer and being on time and in place for a, a time of worship and experience. Well, you know, that's what our saying is. It's more than church. That's the New Calvary saying. It's more than church. It's an experience. Don't you dare leave here the same way you came here. You ought to leave here encouraged. You ought to leave here empowered and confident that you can do what God has for you to do. You can overcome the challenges that may be lying before you. You can do it all, not in your own strength, but because of the power that rests in the Lord Jesus Christ. But also, I want to welcome our Facebook and YouTube worshipers, those of you who may be home. I know you're not at Bedside Baptist, but you're online worshiping with us this morning, and we're glad to have you. Some of you have been faithful in your attendance, not only in that, but in your giving and stewardship. So we're excited about another Sunday uh, that we can come together. I believe that's what the Word of God says, forsake not. He said, don't you, don't you dare just get into a habit of not going to church. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. You know why? We need to encourage each other. We need to hear testimonies from our brothers and sisters about how they made it through their time of difficulty, how they got over their sickness, how they survived uh, things that would have normally taken them out. So that's why we come we also come to uh, not only encourage one another, but to be in the house of prayer and to lift up our voices together, giving God praise and worship. Don't always have to be on the same key. Don't have to be on the right key. Uh, but we can make a joyful noise. Who am I talking to this morning? Uh, we can make a joyful noise unto the Lord. So thank you, praise team, for that. We are excited about what's going on in our lives and in the life of this church. We are getting ready for worship. Praise team, y'all got something else for me? All right, now don't play with me. Don't tease me. My minister Waddell is with us, Lawrence Waddell, and his, my two deacons are there. Thank God for Mother Carter. Mother Carter, did you didn't get the you didn't get the memo. This was casual Sunday. You don't know nothing about casual, do you, Mother? I know. <laughs> not with a sequin, not with a sequin uh, mask. <laughs> Praise God! I am so glad to see everybody in place and in the house of God. Uh, we weren't able to do this a couple of weeks ago. Amen. We had a little outbreak. 
I think we let our guard down. Amen. And, and we had to shut it down for in-person worship until everybody got straightened out and healed and, and the, the green light that we can come back together. But we're going we're gonna to be a little more careful. Amen. We're going to be a little more vigilant about what we're doing. So we thank God for this time of worship. Praise team, would y'all would y'all bless us with another selection and then we're gonna move forward in worship. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's go ahead and put those blessed hands together all over this place. I feel like praising. Can I can I sing with the praise team? You can sing with the praise team. No, I ain't gonna mess y'all up. I don't wanna mess y'all up. (laughs) Hallelujah. Come on everybody, just put those blessed hands together right where you are. Come on and bless the Lord.
right? Three. There's three Sundays we miss or two, right? Two. We miss two Sundays. And I am excited yes. to be in the house of the Lord because I'm going to tell you one thing. It could have been something else. We could have been sitting at somebody's funeral. But God said, I'm giving you another opportunity to give it right. I'm giving you another chance to bless my name. Hezekiah told God, a grave cannot touch Am I speaking to anybody in here? Hezekiah was getting ready to die. But he said, God, a grave can't praise you. I, listen, I, I, I ain't come to pump nobody up, right? Because I recognize that you got to get into the presence of the Lord by yourself. So the Bible declares that when two or more are gathered, he is truly in the midst. Anybody need God to just show up right now? Anybody need God to show up on your situation? I know what it looks like. But I serve a God that said it does not matter because I'm walking right with you. I can assure you, I came to get on the enemy's nerves today because he ain't going to run wild in my house. He ain't going to run wild in my church. And while I still got breath in my body, I decided I was going to give God some glory on this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Anyhow! COVID! Anyhow! And it, that, that was an anyhow praise. It doesn't matter what's going on, we're going to praise them anyhow. I don't care how bad it looks, we're going to open our mouths and give God praise anyhow. All right. I don't know grammatically if that works, but it's anyhow praise. Praise God. Thank you, praise team. I appreciate I appreciate my praise team. Did y'all hear that? I said my praise team. All right, I'm claiming you. Amen. On key, off note, I'm claiming my praise team. Oh, bless the Lord. This is this is a great time to. Get it off your chest. You know, you might have to just let it out. And let God know and let your neighbor know. I've had enough. The devil's not going to get me where, I, where he wants me to be. Praise God. Let me say this. I am, I am excited. I'm excited about those of you who are here who were a little under the weather. We got our Deacon Gary Wilson is in the house. Thank you, Deacon, for pressing your way. Deacon Lance Adderley is here. Thank God for you. Amen, amen. And then, you know, um, Minister Lawrence Waddell is here on behalf of his wife, who is just out of surgery, still in the hospital. Uh, Sister Victoria, you be sure to tell her she may not be an official member of the church, but she belonged to us just as much as, as y'all do. And we're praying and pulling for her. Amen. How's my little deacons over there? Would y'all give them something to do? They're sitting over there waiting on an assignment. Amen. Young people don't come to church just to kind of see the old people running around and make noise. They want something to do as well. I'm talking to my Facebook crowd too. Y'all know. Amen. So we thank God for that. Mother Carter, it's always good to have you in our presence, elegant and looking uh, like you're ready for worship. Amen. I'm glad to see all of my ministers here. Uh, Reverend Ella Priest Edwards. Amen. Minister Bernadette. Praise God. Minister Zena Pressey. Those two, Minister uh, Cornegay and Minister Pressey, uh, sometime next month they will be ordained we're going to lay hands on them and ordain them to the gospel ministry y'all just been practicing <laughs> y'all been trying to figure out how to get it right and we're we're convinced 
that you are of God and you've been called of the Lord and you have an assignment and we're going to equip you and authorize you to do all of that. So uh, everybody, uh, if I have not mentioned your name, it's not because you are any lower on my list of priorities. I'm just standing here trying to get this service moving where it has to go. Deacon, Deacon Fryer, you're feeling better too, I see. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Glad to have everybody in the house. My other daughter, Tasia's back there. Praise God for you. Amen. So, listen, this is, this is what I want y'all to know. I want you to know that uh, this, this time of, of season in the history and the life of the church is so important because we are under renovation. We are, we are making our church over from the top to the bottom, inside and out. Um, the Lord has blessed us with the resources to do it the correct way. And we're in the contract period of, of identifying uh, the right kind of contractors and, and engineers and people that will do it correctly so that we can maintain the historical aspect of this building that is 112 or 13 years old. And we want to get it back to pristine uh, form without uh, taking too much away from its historical uh, character. And we need you to go in prayer for that effort. We have a team of, of renovation uh, members who are leading that charge and keep them in prayer. Michelle Harris Pritchett and Edith Pridgen uh, and Dyra DuPont and uh, Trustee Felton Ferguson uh, and Deacon Lance Adderley uh, myself and my wife, and there may be others, but guess what? We can't do this by ourselves. And, and, and the, the scripture tells us that unless the Lord builds the house, all right, those that labor, their labor is in vain. All right, so we don't want to be doing this in our own strength and our own uh, ingenuity and, and connections and all of that. We want to trust God and, and have him lead us. So we, we, I'm soliciting your prayers. And, and the reason I bring that up, this is not new information that we are under renovation, but it's, it, we've, hit a, we've hit a bump in the road, okay? And, and uh, whereas I have people who are, are very smart and very creative in how we can overcome this, this stumble, um, I know that prayer is going to make the difference. So would y'all include that in your prayers? Amen. Amen. I want to also thank God for our, our Zoom Sunday school class that, that goes on every Sunday morning, rain or shine, on Zoom. The ID information, it should be uh, on the screen for those of you who are viewing on Facebook. Um, amen. And you can, you, you, it's not a closed group. You, we, we share the ID and password information for anyone who enjoys Bible study, uh, and you can get on there, and that's great interactive time of Bible study. And then on Wednesday evenings, we have our uh, Bible study on Facebook where I bring the lesson. I don't have that much opportunity for interaction, but, but y'all can, can blow up the comment section. And tell me you agree with what I'm saying or I'm off course or you can put your own thoughts in there. But that happens every Wednesday uh, at 7 p.m. on Facebook. It's, it happens to be on my Facebook page. So just go to Vincent P. Oliver and you will. Get, and, and guess what? The lessons are available. All you got to do is put your email address on there and we will send you the entire hard copy lesson for that particular Wednesday or any other Wednesday. So, because it's not my information, I'm just putting it together and, and it's the word of God. And we want to share uh, to those who have a hunger and a thirst for uh, the word of God. So we, we thank God for all of that. Amen, amen. And then for those of you who are uh, tithers, uh, I, I want to let you know, those who are in person and those who 
uh, send your gifts in electronically or on Facebook or whatever the case. I, I open the mailbox sometime and, and there are tithing envelopes in the mailbox from faithful members. They don't come, but they give their, they give their tithes. Amen. So uh, tithing is the lifeline of how we do uh, the things that God uh, has for us to do. And I am grateful that during these three years of pandemic and, and coronavirus, we have missed the beat on giving. Now that's, that's nobody but the Lord. Amen. So thank you for your continued giving. You know, we don't do the little march around here, put the money on the plate, and then you go, no, on the way out, take your gifts, and there's a, there's a table in the back. The trustees will, will take your gift and your tithes on the way out. But if you don't mind, would you please put your gift in your hand right now? Get your tithes out, whatever it is, your envelope. If, you, if you're doing Cash App or Give the Fly, get your device out. I want to pray. I want to pray for your gift. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> you better say that out loud. Don't want to say it out loud. Huh? <laughs> say that again. Yeah. I'm going I'm to get ready to do something. I don't know about <laughs> what you said. <laughs> Y'all should know by now you got to, you just got to just blurt it out. We'll, we'll, it'll be all right. Pro, protocol can get crushed around here. Amen. Y'all got your gifts in your hand. Let me pray for your offering. Father in heaven, once again, we have uh, assembled ourselves, and uh, there are those of us, Lord, who take you at your word. Uh, therefore, we are obedient to your command that we would tithe, that we would be um, supporters and stewards of the work of the kingdom. So we take our gifts and we place them in our hands but more important, Lord, we give them into your able hands. Would you take now, Lord, uh, these tithes and uh, bless them that they may be used for uh, kingdom building and your glory. And then, Lord, the remaining 90% or whatever they have given, would you uh, enlarge it, increase it so that uh, they will know that you are a promise keeper, that you will open windows of heaven and pour out blessings that we won't have room enough to receive. And then, Lord, if there's somebody here today who is unable to give, Lord, we pray that you would open doors, that you would, would uh, give them favor. Maybe they're looking for a job. Maybe they're sprucing up their resume. Bless them, Lord, and, and send them to the right place and put it on the hearts of those who, who are speaking to them that they would see uh, you in them and the potential for them to be a greater service to uh, their, their organization, that we all may be able to do what you've called us to do and that we would live in comfort and, and we would be able to do the things that uh, give us joy and, and abundant living. All of these blessings we uh, place into your hands. Bless our trustees that they would make wise and prudent decisions and be honest in their stewardship. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you all put your hands together and clap for some good giving? Amen. Amen. Giving ought not be a burden. Giving ought not be the slow part of the service. Should not be the, the intermission portion of the service. My Bible says that they didn't worship unless they had something to bring to give before they worshiped. So we thank God for all of that. And I'm almost done with my comments and I want my praise team to get ready. But there's just a few more things I want to say. Uh, we, we have with us uh, Chaplain uh, Pat. I don't know if you want to take a few moments to uh, express why you're here. Uh, I think we are honored to have you. And from what I heard, your brief uh, comments uh, we could we can use to hear from you. Do you want to? Do you want to? I, I'm putting you on the spot. I know, but you you can stand right there where you are, if you're comfortable.
Look at you. And um, I work at the Monroe Children's Health in Wilmington, Delaware, and as a household care counselor. So I work with those families who have kids in very difficult straits. Mm -hmm. And because of that work, our service, our physicians, prescribe very powerful uh, drugs. And on those occasions, when we have people come into our hospital that have sickle cell disease and may be facing a pain crisis, um, I get to meet those wonderful people. And one day I was called into the hospital room as a young man, and I never forget my question that young doctor could ask me. And his question was, Pastor Pat, can you tell me why God has this case? Mm. And as we talked through that and unpacked it, we together tried to get to the blessings that we could recognize and observe. But while we're talking in that way, we hear sometimes in the hallways the comment of the white dominant physicians and nurses and so forth who may not understand you know, everything that we as a people are called to go through together, but we as white people have not cooperated very well in the last 400 years. And because of that, we need to come awake. So as I'm talking to this young man, I hear this sitting in the hallway saying, well, maybe he just is seeking drugs. Or maybe he has behavior issues. And maybe we should get him, since we haven't been able to help him in 12 days, maybe we need to get him to another facility. But as I'm listening to this young man's story, that's not the problem at all. Because he's a 17-year-old honor student, all right? with a single mom, two other brothers, and he works at a lumber yard to help his mom. Okay? And when he felt this crisis coming on, he knew okay, he had to get to the emergency department quickly. But all his usual sources of a bribe weren't available to him. So he hid drugs. Mm. And this was a man that his Muslim boys had ended up in a hospital for 12 days. This young man did not need a behavioral health facility. He needed a ride. Yeah. And I am utterly amazed how much my faith and my journey has changed by being privileged to worship in families like yours because that faith was so strong. And it occurred to me in some other readings that maybe if we brought the faith community a little closer together with the hospital, because God knows you have reason not to trust the healthcare system, right? We all do, but especially, you know, people of color. So maybe if we help the faith communities and supported them to come closer to our patients, maybe they could help, help together. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to learn and figure out a way to bring us together. And maybe we can help these kids and families, and maybe it could go even beyond that, you know, into the adult world, into people who suffer from chronic diseases across the board. So I'm just here to say hello, um, to introduce myself, and to ask if you would teach me, you know, help me understand, and maybe we can build this bridge together. Mm. I'm sorry if I took too much time. No, that was great use of time. What an encouraging word that we needed to hear, especially those of us who are about to give up on the system, give up on our white brothers and sisters. You are a breath of fresh air, a ray of sunshine. Thank you. Pastor Pat, you're welcome here anytime. And whatever it is we can do to, to, to support your work you know, and, and make you even the more sensitive to the um, cultural divide, we're ready to help do that. So you be encouraged. You're doing a great work. Y'all give her another hand. All right. It's, it's time. It's time for the word. Anybody ready for the word? 
Anybody been beat up this past week? Let down, double cross, backstab. Amen. Anybody been been uh, you know falling short of your goal and wondering what happened? All of the plans, you all of your strategies, and you still didn't make it. Well, guess what? The word is often tailor made for your situation. I have no idea what is going to be preached today. I'm not preaching. <laughs> All right. We have, a, we have a very capable preacher in the person of Minister Daniel Wilson. All right. I think he was trying to preach a little earlier. But guess what? The Holy Spirit is going to speak to him in such a way that he's going to hit those areas that you need a word Sometimes it's just confirmation. Other times it's, it's inspiration, all right? But the fact of the matter is I have, I have enough confidence in the word of God. And none of the preachers that preach here in my place, they, they know not to get outside of what this Bible says. Oh, that one might be their Sayonara sermon. <laughs> all right, so you're going to get some word. So after the praise team will bless us. Y'all got another one? I know I, I asked for, for an extra one. Y'all got one? Okay. Can I sing on this one? Y'all ain't going to let me sing. They're going to sing. And then, they, you know, stand up, Daniel. About 40 years ago, I could have got into that little whatever that is he had on. <laughs> I, I can't wear it now. <laughs> it won't look right. Praise God. After the praise team the preacher. Y'all pray for the man of God. All right. Hallelujah. 
personal. My response is Hallelujah. You're my Redeemer. Hallelujah. Let's get on his nerves. Whoa. by God. See, God told me to remind the people on this morning that we cannot forget how far he has brought us from. And as I stand here today and I take a trip down memory lane, everybody here has their own testimony that God has given you. And, and, and what I want you to do right now, because we do forget, right? That's, that's just our ignorance. I want you to go back to the place where you had nothing. I want you to go back to the place where you, when you were sick in your body. I want you to go back to the place where you felt like everybody who said they love you turned their back on you. And right where you are, can we just worship God right in that moment? I, I know some more of us have been through more things than that. But I'm standing right now, God, and I'm saying thank you because you brought me a mighty long way. God, I should have been dead. I could have been dead. But God, you saw it fit to have me standing right here with my feet planted. I don't know why you got me here, God. But I decided to show you how grateful I am this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Let's just one voice, one sound. Let's just open up our mouth. Let's just give God some glory for right where you are. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. That's 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 all right. That's all right. That's all right. There's nothing wrong with tapping into the presence of God. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know about you, but I, I, I still feel God just circling around, tapping folk on the shoulder, saying, don't, don't forget about me. Hallelujah. 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 Has he been good to you? Did he bless you? You're here for a reason. You're, you're still here for a reason. And he has not forgotten about you or your situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Truly is an honor to stand before you this morning. I give honor to God who is truly the head of my life. I give honor to the angel of this house, Bishop Oliver. Can we just put our hands together for our bishop in this place? The first lady in her absence. Amen. Every deacon, every deaconess, every mother. Every official assembled here at this church, I bless God for you, you, and you, and the musicians. Get a musician song. Can we get a the musician song? The, the, the bishop, the maestro, and his son. Amen. Praise God. Uh, my, my children are here. They're, they're up top. Now, I couldn't sit up there when I was growing up, but, I, you know, times is changing, so they they, they up there. I guess they're they doing all right. I give honor to my dad for always being in position. Bless you, dad. Yeah, my mom, minister, soon-to-be pastor, Reverend Zena Pressy. Amen. And lastly, I give honor to the, 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 the one that hold me on both sides. When, when, not when I'm tired, but when I'm toured. See, it's the difference between tired and toured. Toured, I'm, I'm done. I'm working all day, right? And she holds me down, and I thank God for my wife, Victoria. <laughs> And my friend, my sister, my homegirl, my ace, Beanie, she always shows up when I got to preach. Thank you, Beanie. She, she don't even know it, but she's she going to be my member one day. A amen? Amen. I'm just messing with you. If you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, can you meet me in Hosea chapter 13? Hosea chapter 13. Here at New Calvary, it's custom that we stand for the reading of the word of God. Amen. Amen. 
Hosea chapter 13, and I want to just deal with the sixth verse. And I'm not going to be before you long, but there's something that jumped out at me, and I had to grab it real quick. Amen. When you have it, will you say amen? Amen. amen. We all have it. Hosea chapter 13, verse 6 says, when I fed them, they were satisfied. When they were satisfied, they became proud. Then they forgot me. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Truly, Lord, we thank you for another day, another opportunity that was not promised. God, I thank you for the word that you have placed in my heart. God, I pray now in the name of Jesus that everything that I have studied, God, you allow it to come back in the name of Jesus. God, allow your anointing to fall fresh on me. God, hide Daniel behind your glorious cross so that I may be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. And if I have said, done, or thought anything that was not pleasing unto you, forgive me right now in the name of Jesus, for I am a sinner, but I am saved by grace. And the people of God say, amen. Uh, uh, real quick this morning, uh, I want to speak to you from the thought of don't forget. Don't forget. My brothers and my sisters, it's easy to forget God when we are on top of the world. In fact, we have become so comfortable with giving God less of what we have to offer. A wise man once told me that familiarity breeds disrespect. In other words, God, thank you for blessing me with everything. I'm only going to give you half of me. And it's strange how quickly we forget God when we finally get that very thing that we have been praying for. God, bless me with a house. We get the house and it's dirty. No, nobody won't clean up. God, I just, I just need a good man. Somebody who going to love me unconditionally. And after the honeymoon stage is over and a couple arguments, we, we back on the phone with our homegirl. Girl, he, he just wasn't for me. Understand that when God blesses us with something, we have to learn how to cherish it when it is stripped down to nothing. I'm going to say that one more time. If you're on Facebook, go ahead and just repost that for me. When God blesses you with something, we have to learn how to cherish it even when it's stripped down to nothing. When we pray to God and say we need something, God takes a look at our maturity level and says, uh, uh, I don't, I don't know if you you ready for what you asking me for. He, he looks at our maturity level because he already knows that if he blesses us with this thing, it, it just might destroy us. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 29, it says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. See, God already knows what we need, how we need it, when we need it, and, 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 and more importantly, how he's going to give that very thing to us. See, most of us, if we had a million dollars in our bank accounts tomorrow, half of us ain't coming back to church. We, we ain't coming back up in here. We, we might pull up on first Sunday because we, we know it's a little, little, little packed. And, and just to show the congregants the, the, the new vehicle that we just bought. But after that, we, we got to go. Right? New friends, new clothes, new boo, and a new God. Because we begin to worship things 
instead of God. God, I need, this is me talking to God, I need you to keep me right where I am with nothing but humility. And if humility is all that God decides to bless me with, he's already done enough. And this is where we find Israel in the Bible, in the wilderness for 40 years. And it's crazy that you said 40 years ago you'd be able to to jump in this thing right here. He said, I'll, I'll rock that thing. We find Israel in the Bible, in the, in the wilderness, 40 years. A lot can happen in 40 years. In this situation, Israel got tired of waiting on God and start doing all type of crazy stuff. These cats was, was creating idols and worshiping them. They were killing their children as a sacrifice to these idols. And God never gave them instructions to do that. But because God is a promise keeper, he looked beyond all their faults. And he told them, I'm still going to bless you. Uh, with what I, I told you I was going to bless you with. A land flowing with milk. And honey. Now Joshua, uh, one of the leaders of the Israelites, was near the city of Jericho. He looked up and saw a man standing uh, near uh, Jericho with the sword. And Joshua asked the question. He said, are you for us or are you our enemy? The man said, neither. But I'm a commander of the army of the Lord. The man told Joshua, take off your sandals for the place you were standing is holy. Now, if I can use my sanctified imagination right there, those 40 years, right, those sandals he had on out in the wilderness for, for 40 years of, 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 of all type of debauchery on them. And you cannot be in the presence of God and be ignorant to the fact of how he has blessed you. See, you can always tell how grateful a person is. Um, you can always tell how grateful a person is for the, 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 the way that their praise is. I'm gonna say, you can always tell how grateful a person is by the way their praise is. And I can see somebody right now saying, it, it, it don't take all that. But, it, but, but you don't know what my praise is about. See, see we, we get comfortable just, thank you, thank you, God. When, when is church over? I'm, I'm ready to go home. But there are some folk that really come to church expecting an experience like never before because I've been through so much stuff all week that when I make it to the house of God I, I'm telling you right now I, I got to leave my sandals at the door because the 40 miles that I had to walk to get here I decided that I was going to leave it at the door because I can't get into the presence of God with all the junk and, and the stuff that I got holding on me so I got to leave my sandals at the door. I dare you to learn how to leave your sandals. You got to leave the sandals at the door. Because don't nobody know what you had to go through. Right? And, and, and I'm talking about just this week because I recognize that when you serve God, Bishop, when you serve God, the, the, the enemy, he, he's salty. He, he upset. He, he ain't feeling that. So he going to throw everything he got at you. He going to make you feel like you don't need to get up and go to church on Sunday because ain't nothing going on in there. That man ain't going to tell you nothing that I told him to tell you. But when you've got a relationship with God, it no longer matters about what's going on around you because I'm coming through the door leaving my sandals with expectations. 
came here this morning to remind the people, don't forget. Don't forget God blessed you. Don't forget that he woke you up this morning. Don't forget that he woke you up this morning. Don't forget that God woke you up this morning. Don't forget that he woke you up this morning. I don't know who I'm, but I don't want you to forget that God woke you up this morning. I don't want nobody here getting excited because God woke you up this morning. I just want to tell you, don't forget. Don't forget that he's a healer. Don't forget that he's a problem solver, a way maker. Don't forget that he's my battle axe. Don't forget that he's Mary, baby. Don't forget that he's the same God that brought you to it. Don't forget that he's the same God that's getting ready to bring you through it. Don't forget somebody. See, God told Joshua. I have delivered Jericho into your hand. But I'm getting ready to give you instructions on how to get this wall down. You, 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 you got to march around the city for seven days. And he was talking to the priest. He said, I want you to get all the priests together. And I want you to blow a horn on the, on the seventh time around, the seventh day. I want you to blow a horn. And then when you blow the horn, I, 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 the people ought to shout. Right? This is this is this is God. This is this is this is God talking. He he said, Joshua, on the seventh day, he said, I'll i I don't even want you talking. I don't want y'all talking to each other, figuring out what I'm getting ready to do. He said, All I want you to do is walk. And and, 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 and in the scripture it was is specific, it was crazy because it was saying, I, I no talking at all, just just silence, just walking. Because we're following instructions. And as they're walking around the city, Rev, I can only imagine I'm saying, God, I don't know how you get ready to do this, but thank you. God, I don't know how you going to fix my situation, but thank you. God, I'm going to trust you even when I can't see you, God, but thank you. Because I'm a firm believer that if we are following the instructions of what God is saying, he's going to do the very things that he told us. To do uh, they, 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 on the seventh day, the people shouted, and when they shouted, the, the walls begin to fall down. Somebody, somebody, you you not understanding what I'm saying? What wall do you have in your life right now? Listen, I'm trying to figure out what wall. Have you had not been able to knock down because your praise has been on pause? But I'm speaking to somebody who's ready to get into the presence of God and tell that wall that when I leave this place, I refuse to allow you to still be standing in front of me. I'm, I'm tearing the wall down with my praise. My praise says, Hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I'm tearing this wall down. I, I, I don't care if folk with me. I don't care if folk looking at me like I'm crazy. I don't care if folk saying it don't take all that when he's sitting up there doing. But I've been through too much to allow the wall to stand up in front of me. God said you are anointed and appointed for this season. You ought to open up your mouth and give him glory. The wall is getting ready to come down because folk are getting ready to tap into what God has for you. On the side of the wall is milk and honey, but we can't get past because we don't know how to worship because we forgot what God has done for us. We forgot what he has done for us this far. And watch this, friends. This is, this is so crazy right here, y'all. I promise you. It says, even... <laughs> When I try to forget how good God is, it will send me into a breakdown. Uh, see, uh, this is what Moses was talking about when he asked God, who do I say sent me? And God said, tell them 
I am sent you. See, everything that is connected to God is good. Let, let me help somebody. Let me, let me, let me. Forget the fact that God healed you when you were sick. Forget it. Forget the fact that he got up with all power in his hands. Forget the fact that God brought you from where you used to be to where you are now. Forget the fact that when you were broke, busted, and disgusted with nothing, you still made it. Forget the fact that God woke you up this morning and started you on your way. Forget the fact that you now have money in the bank. Forget the fact that God is the ultimate healer, the saver, the ruler of my life. Forget the fact because when I try to forget, I can't help but thank him. When I try to forget, I can't help but give him glory. When I try to forget I can't help to lose my mind when I try to forget how good God is it sends me into a nervous break a nervous breakdown and as I continue to read through the Bible the the, the, the scripture tells me that the, the walls of Jericho um, they, they were uh, 11 feet they were 11 feet high and it was 14 inches wide. It said many try to penetrate the wall. Many try to knock the wall down. They, they try to dig ditches and, and, and build bricks and, and all that other stuff to get over the wall. But guess what? Every last one of them were unsuccessful. They were unsuccessful until they ran into the praise. <laughs> They were unsuccessful until they ran into the praise of the people. I'm a firm believer that right now where you are, if you give God glory, just hear me. If you give God glory, now this is, this is, uh, and I'm not prophesying, but I'm, 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 I'm telling you what I saw. If you give God glory in this moment, the things that you were dealing with, the things that you were struggling with, that, that wall, that spiritual wall that's been hindering you from getting what God really has from you. I, I came to tell you on this morning that it's coming down today. I, I got any faith-based believers that's getting ready to knock this wall down. See, Israel didn't walk by faith. They walked by sight. They didn't walk by faith. They walked by sight. And I know folk at New Calvary. I, I know we got some faith-based believers. I'm, I'm looking at my dad and I'm recognizing that that is a miracle up there. Because when the enemy came to try to take him out, he had a praise on his belly that said, I refuse to allow the walls to knock me down. I'm looking at my mom when the, the stroke tried to take her out. She's still here. She's still alive. She's still well. I'm looking at my child when they was telling us we couldn't have one. But now he's four years old. I, I, I don't know about you, but the wall that's in my life, I'm, I'm up for the challenge because it's getting ready to come down. Every enemy that was designed to keep you where you are. My praise is now getting ready to remove them from me. Because there is something that I came to get from God. Watch this. It says, God will never lead us where his grace cannot provide for us. Oh, wow. God will never lead us where his grace cannot provide. And many of us don't want to get past the wall, Pastor, because we we, we too afraid of what's, what's out there. We we too afraid to get past the wall. See, these, see you, ain't, you ain't really been through nothing. These, these jokers been in the wilderness for 40 long years. Folk been dying. They been getting sick. They was getting hit with all type of plagues. So when the wall came down, When the wall came down, they, they were the first ones through. 
And they were able to get the land. They were able to retrieve the land that God has promised their ancestors, their their forefathers. This, This was over 40, 50, 60, 70 years, 400 years ago. And in the promise that he gave them, they could not receive it because half of them did not believe. See, half of them didn't believe. So, so what, what did God do? God said, okay, I'm, I, I need y'all to get, get 12, 40, get tw- 40 people. And I, and I want you to go and, 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 and scout the enemy's camp. All right? I'm sacrificing 40. To go scout the enemy's camp. The 40 went. They saw what was going on. Mind you, God had already given them, giving them the promise. They came back. They said, hey, dog. Listen here. We, we, ain't, we ain't got shot. Let, let's go ahead and pack our stuff up. We'll we be getting ready to walk back across the Jordan and see if Moses is coming and, and open up the sea for us again. Because it, it, it ain't, it ain't going to happen over here. All right? These jokers is too big. Right? So when they came back, everybody started getting scared. No, nobody want to proceed behind the wall now because 40 people then came back and said, listen here, uh, it ain't happening. So what God do? God said, y'all want to listen? Y'all, y'all want to listen to the 40 that, that, that just came back and told and for The 40 people that came back, right, he, he said, that's how many years I'm going to keep y'all out here waiting. Because y'all listened to every fool that came back and told you what I cannot do. I didn't already told you what I was getting ready to do. So the, the 40 people that came back, they start spreading rumors to everybody saying we, we ain't going to make it through this thing, y'all. So what, what God said, you know what? I, I, I got to get rid of the bad apple. Every, every last one of them who doubted God and did not believe, they died. And what God did was their children that they were having out in the wilderness for 40 years. The children, they got circumcised because their parents were no longer around. So they circumcised the children and prepared them for war. Because when you circumcised back in this day, that showed that you were getting into covenant agreement with God. I'm I'm on the right track right there. That showed that you were in covenant agreement yes. with God. Yes. I'm, I'm really messing my up right here. When, when you're in covenant agreement with God, every promise that God pro- yes. proclaimed in the Bible, yes. it now belongs to you. Yes. Every promise. If, if he told you, you are healed by my stripes, you, 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 are, you are healed. Am I speaking to anybody in here? Anybody want to be set free? Anybody want to be delivered? Anybody know that God is real and able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ask or think? God said that he has a duty to keep his promise. He has a duty to keep his promise. And and, and the covenant, Mm -hmm. it's sacred. It's sacred. So if it's secret, if it's sacred, that means it's personal. (laughs) And God don't play about his children. He, he don't play about his children. He, he got come see about me. I'm talking about little old Daniel who, who don't got nothing. He, when, when I get to opening up my mouth, he got to come see about me. Anybody need God come see about you? Hallelujah. I, I, I'm curious. Any, anybody need God come see you about something this morning? See, if I need God come see me, right, there's a behavior that needs to be attached to that. There's a behavior. And, and, and the behavior uh, might look out of the, the, the norm to, to other folk. Because we have become so comfortable with just relaxing in the presence of God. 
this, you, do you know that when you walk through these doors, you are in spiritual warfare? The, the, I'm talking about the moment you get up, God is battling. You, you are battling the enemy and, and, and every imp that he had designed for you today. So when you come walking through that door and we come in here and we sit down like we don't owe God nothing, right? That same thing that you came in here with is going to leave with you and you're going to be fighting that thing all week. That's what we don't, we don't want to do that, Key, because that's too much like right. That's too much like right. I need, I need to be delivered today. And, and I'm finished, Maestro. You can give me something soft. I need to be delivered. I, I need the wall to come down. I need my life back. I need my family back. I need my children back. You know, when, when, when the enemy knows that he, yeah, he can't touch you, he, he attacked the things that we love. And some of us love money. Man, the canker worm would get up in your account so fast. I'm talking about you, you pay one bill and you broke. One bill. Um, uh, now I, I'm looking at my wife like she she didn't she didn't bamboozle me again. But we have to make it in our mind a pact with God to say today's the day I'm bringing that wall down. I got anybody ready to bring the wall down to today? If if you ready to bring the wall down, can we just stand up all over this place? I, I just want to get on the enemy nerve right quick. I just want to get on his nerve one time and bring the wall down because I no longer want to live like this. You are too powerful to allow a wall to keep you from the promise of God. I don't know where it was in the Bible, so I ain't ready to quote it. But he said, when the people... Stop crying out for me. He said, I, I, I got some rocks that's going to cry out. Those same rocks that cried out, they fell in submission when the people opened up their mouth at the wall. Because the praises of the people are too powerful to not give God praise. You, you praise gives you life, years. Oh, you, you could be getting ready to die Friday and not even know it, but you came into the house of God and gave him glory. And he said, I ain't got enough people giving me glory. But I know Beanie going to worship me regardless. I know Sister Toya going to worship me regardless. So I'm going to take somebody else out and I'm going to spare their life. Because it was Hezekiah who said, God, ho hold on now. A, a grave can't praise you. And I don't know about you, but I, I refuse. I refuse to allow a rock to cry out for me. I, I ain't homeless. I ain't living outside on the streets. I ain't strung out on drugs. My parents ain't strung out on drugs. I got a wife that love me. She cooks sometimes, but she still love me. My family love me. And there's some people who don't like me, and that's okay. If you don't remember anything that is said today, the one thing, the, the one thing that I want us to be mindful of is we cannot forget. Whose we are. Let's, let's not forget who we belong to. Because when we recognize who we belong to, we recognize that we're in covenant with who we belong to. So anything that happened to us after that, God said, I already got a hand on it. It's cool. Just, just ride it out for me for one second. But you're not going to die in this situation. I just need you to ride it out. Because if you rolling, I'm riding. This, this God talking, if you rolling... I'm Ryan. 
And I don't know about you, but there's no better passenger. Matter of fact, I, I don't need one drive. I'm going to pull over right here on 4th and Adams. And I'm going to let him take the wheel. Because wherever God decides to take me, we, we, we have signed up for the assignment. So it's time that we begin to get every benefit that God has for us. And I was sitting back and I'm like, you know what, God? I, I, I don't know what I'm going to preach. I, I don't know what's going on. He, he said, yeah, I, I don't know what you're going to preach either. But I, I, I got something for you. I, I want you to tell the people, don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I just want to thank everybody for allowing me to bring a little word to you this morning. Just a little word, girl. Just a little word. And I pray to God that whatever hits your life this week, you don't forget who God is in your life. You do not forget that God is a healer, that God is a blessing, that God is a way maker, that God is a promise keeper. that he will never leave you nor forsake you. Don't forget that nothing catches him by surprise. He's, he's already on top of your situation. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell. Just want to tell. 
So very quietly, you can invite him into your life. Lord, I'm a sinner. And without you, I'm lost. I believe that you died on the cross. And you died just for me. And at this moment, in this space and time, I invite you to become a part of my life. Matter of fact, I give my life to you. That's why I call you Lord. I become your slave. I become your servant. What you say, I'll have to do. I'll look to your word in your Bible to get my instructions. And I'll begin to reprioritize the way I live. But won't you come in and take over my life? Perhaps you're already saved and you're out of fellowship and you need a church home. Well, we open our arms and welcome you to come to be a part of this fellowship. We're not perfect. We just love Jesus. When we get through stepping on your feet and getting on your nerves at the end of the day, we just love Jesus. And you won't hold it against us if we're not perfect. But we invite you to come here. If not here, then a Bible-believing, Christ-centered church is where you need to be. We heard a great message this morning from the man of God with a stern reminder don't forget. I know you, 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 you got that job you've always wanted. You got that home. Things are looking good. But don't forget. Don't forget where you come from. I stopped on the corner and I gave $2 to a fellow named Chuck. He's always got his card and he's standing on the corner. And after I gave him the card, I said, you all right today? He said, Pastor. I said, How do you know I'm a pastor? He said, I know you're a pastor. Because every Sunday you, you stop right here. Either you or your wife, y'all give me some money. I said, But you're all right, though. He said, I'm all right. You're praying for me? I said, I'm still praying for you, Chuck. He didn't forget. So I can't forget. We could be Chuck. be back 10 years from now. And you know, the preacher said something. He he said, I got I got a cake of worm in my account. I got to go home and tell my wife, look, check the account with me. We got a cake of worm. Praise God. Well, let's hear it for our preacher. Good job. I love Daniel. Y'all don't know this, and I'm, I'm, y'all forgive me if I'm stirring all the beans, but but God is God is increasing their lives. He and, and Toya, he, he's blessing them with another home and security. And his career is taking off. And, and Toya has all of these creative gifts, and and, and what an appropriate message. all right with what God has given you. He can trust you with the blessings and the increase. So I say that not to brag on them and that we all up in their business, but, but there's something God has for you. Yeah, yeah. And guess what? It's an increase. Yeah. It, it's, it's a bump up. Yeah. But don't forget. Yeah. He wants to be able to trust you. Yeah. Even if, if it's with healing and good health. the word of God. I couldn't I could not have preached that sermon to, and God God gave me help. And I'm grateful for this young man and, and the spirit that the Lord has placed in him to, to, to minister to our needs today. So Facebook family, y'all keep coming to church with us. Don't go to Bedside Baptist. They don't preach right there. They don't sing right over there. Alright? 
They don't even dress right. Don't come to church in pajamas. But go to church. Trust God. Continue to serve him. And guess what? Everything will be all right. Once again, thank you, uh, Pastor Pat, for gracing us with not only your presence, but some words that encourage our hearts. And we're praying for your ministry as well. Can I? Can I do the benedict? once again we have felt your presence and we've experienced renewal that's why we come because burnout brought us here worries and cares of the world and the political season and all of the negativity and all of the violence that we witness and sometimes we have to come run into the house of prayer just to get away from TV and get away from the commotion and all of the hatred and all of the negativity. And when we get here, we discover that it's not better than dark clouds. That you're standing strong and you're on our side. And we bless and praise your name. Give us a spirit and a mind that we will never forget this time when you brought us home. And we'll be careful to give a name, praise, glory, and honor. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance and give thee peace. And the peace of God, which passed all understanding, shall keep thy heart and thy soul through Christ. Henceforth, now and forever. Let us all say amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. Don't forget to give your offering on the way out. I love you.